Bloody light clothes on. <laughs> so why? Because they want to become same color as me, brown. Same color as me. But when I go to landlady, open the door. Oh, no colored swab. Go home. Outside. They're bloody mad. All bloody mad. What's the coon getting all hairy? <laughs> No need to get all airy, it is there, John John. Yeah, well, you can't blame him, can you? I mean, just so rude. I'm not rude, mate, not rude. Not rude? No. Going off about, about the coloured people and the man standing there? Well, I've heard you going on about them. Not in front of them, you haven't. Yeah, but I mean, look, in a... Look, give us me drink over here, darling. Look, in a political discussion, see, in your polemicals, you are entitled to raise your salient facts, Mr. you, Graham? See? Hey, the coon over there is political, isn't he? I mean, it's not his fault. It's not your fault, John John, but you are a political <laughs> question, see? You've got to admit that, haven't you? Yes, and no, but there's such a thing as politeness. All right, granted, there is yeah. such a thing as politeness, but this is still a free country, isn't it? Still a democracy, and you are entitled to thoughts. Granted, granted, yes, it right. is a democracy, and you Thank are entitled you. to thoughts. Right. Granted. Yes. Yes, but you don't have to voice them, do All you? All right. Well, say I didn't see him standing there. Let's put it that way. All right. <laughs> well, if you didn't see him standing there, all I can say is... You want to get down the National Health and get yourself a new pair of goggles? Here, listen, for your information, Sonny, these goggles are not on the National Health, because these goggles, mate, happen to be private goggles. By virtue of the fact that they was bought before your Labour lot brought the National Health in. Not my Labour lot. All right, I'll grant you not your Labour lot, but they were still bought before the National Health come in, see? Because these glasses, they belong to my dear old dad, they did. <laughs> I was presented to him by the Prince of Wales in commemoration of the abdication crisis. Oh, get it Maybe. Never mind about maybe. Those are the facts, son. Facts. Inconcevable facts. Facts. Yeah. Facts. I'll tell you the facts. If you can't see him, you want to get them changed. Nothing wrong with these, mate. Nothing wrong with these goggles. Don't you worry. I can see him in nine and nine's national health. And I can see him in mine too, you daft old rat bag. <laughs> Look, why don't you <laughs> shut up? <laughs> Live it. Marvellous, eh? It's marvellous. Come in here for quiet drink, don't you? And everybody wants to pick argument with you, don't they? I didn't pick argument with you. You bloody picked argument with me. <laughs> On a point of information, Sambo, I did not, <laughs> I did not pick an argument with you, did I? I was merely expressing an opinion. An opinion, which is the sovereign right of every Englishman to express. A right guaranteed to us under the Magna Charter and an opinion. That is not only my opinion, mate, but it is also the opinion of one of the finest political leaders this country's ever had. Enoch bloody power on his <laughs> Mister to you, if you don't mind. All right, then. Enoch, Mr. Bloody power on <laughs> Bloody white sambo. Listen. <laughs> you listen to me, Gunga Din. Gunga Din? <laughs> There. You'll soon change your tune if he gets it at number 10, mate. God blimey! Your feet won't touch the ground, they won't. <laughs> oh, he'll have you back in the jungle playing on your tom-toms before you can say that. <laughs> I'm, I am leaving. I am not paying £2,000 to come into this country to be insulted by bloody... bloody skinhead! <laughs> You put the boot in. What? Come on, lad. It's a lesson, Jay. Two thousand pounds? Four for two thousand pounds. I'd get out, wouldn't you? Yeah, two thousand pounds. You're bloody liar. Because it don't cost no two thousand pounds to get here from India, do it? Pakistan. All right, India, Pakistan. What's the difference? There's no no difference. All bloody wogland, mate, isn't it? <laughs> it don't cost you no two thousand pounds to come here, does it? Not even if you fly it down. I don't fly. I do not come by air. We come by boat all the way to Calais in France. Look, I'm perfectly well aware where Calais is. We're not all bloody mm. ignorant, are we? All right, then. Listen, oh, yeah. so, I'm getting to Calais in France and I have to contact English friend. And I give him 600 pounds to row me across the channel to Sandwich Bay and Kent. When I get there, I say to him, OK, sailor, how do I get to London? And he says, give me another 30 pounds. So I give him another 30 pounds. And he said, right, 
I want you to walk up that road and make this sign. <laughs> and I say, how will I know which is my transport? And he said, when one stops, that's it. <laughs> Oh, he had you me. over there, me old coon, didn't he, eh? Hey? Come on, sir. He must have seen you coming, all right. <laughs> well, you've been better off coming by air. It'd have been cheaper by air, wouldn't it? Well, no, cheaper by air. <laughs> My cousin, Patrick O'Grady, comes from Nairobi. In just a minute, just a minute. Your, your cousin, Patrick O'Grady? Yes, I'm Irish. Irish? Yes, <laughs> I am a red-faced Mick Bigorra, be Jesus. <laughs> Look, mother of a three, blue eyes. Look, I've seen everything now, and I? Bloody chocolate-coloured mix. <laughs> <laughs> marvellous. Let me finish, please. And see, come, it's cheaper by air, because he's flying from Nairobi to London. But when he gets to London, they will not land, let him land, because he has not got a permit. See? So, he has to pay. 600 pounds to form and cleaner for overall and brew so that he can sweep his way out of the airport and up the M4 to London. <laughs> and three wives still in left luggage. See? <laughs> they are all getting in without bloody permits now. Yeah, but it isn't allowed. No, but it will be when we join a common market, will it? Hey, I mean, we'd be surrounded by bloody foreigners then. I mean, it's bad enough now, isn't it? Having his lot over here. Yeah. Okay. Old Packy Paddy's mob. Well, I mean, soon we're going to have all your krauts, all your bloody froggies, and your, your square heads, and your aspagnolis. I mean, there'll be swarms of them over there, won't there? We've already, had, we've already had to change our money to suit them, haven't we? See, look, look I'll tell you. See, it used to be ten bob, didn't it? Yes. Well, now it's fifty pence, isn't it? I mean, they've halved it overnight. <laughs> See, and it's just a thin end of the wedge. I mean, you get all them continentals over here. So, I mean, Europe, there's millions of them, you know. Europe is full of them, or continentals. <laughs> See, well, you get all that bloody lot over here. I mean, we're only a little island, aren't we? We're well, going to bloody well sink us, they are. <laughs> England's already sunk, mate. Three, two, after extra time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you mind your business, Sambo. Listen to me now, then. I am British subject and I have the right to vote. Vote? I, I vote today. Cross, 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 I go. And I vote for Liberal, Jeremy Thorne, because he can't get in, so I'm safe. <laughs> Listen, they've given, they've given them the vote now. I mean, they've got a say in how to run our country. I mean, before you know where you are, there'll be half of them in the House of Commons. You know what we'll finish up with, isn't you? Bloody black prime minister, that's what. I'll <laughs> never come to that. I'll shift the Harold to see to that, mate. Oh, why? Why? Well, I'll tell you why, because if he thinks he's getting a lot of coloured votes, he'll black up for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know coloured labour works. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I've taken you up on the coloured market now. The common market, right? Right, common you market. You mentioned it a few minutes ago. I did indeed. Right, it's the only way to run Europe in this modern day. What are you bloody talking about? Oi, fill that up, will you? Listen, the only way to run Europe, mate, is the way Europe was one run years ago, isn't it? Yeah. With a bloody great navy and a good dose of cold steel. Yeah. That soon quiet them down, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh. Bloody potty Who's potty uh, You're potty. How can, how can war solve any problem? Well, what about the last war then, Sambo, eh? That what about it? What about it? That solved a few problems, oh. didn't it? Oh, if oh. you shut up, you might bloody learn something. I'll tell you how, because you let the crowds know who was the master, didn't it? Oh. Oh, that. No, no, listen, I am a non-violent pacifist. You're a bloody coward, more All oh, right, I'm a non-violent pacifist coward. Yeah. Listen, listen, you're crowds. Your Crouch, your Square Edge, your Germans, as right. you call them, they are more prosperous yeah, yeah, now than we are. Proof. You know why? Because they've done better out of losing the war than we did out oh, of winning it. Oh, great, but whose fault is that then? Hey, on a point of information, whose bloody fault's that? Don't look at me. Oh, I don't want to bloody look at you, <laughs> This one. The idea of a European economic community is to make Britain stronger in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. By, by joining up with a lot of smelly foreigners? No. No, by allowing them to join up with us. Listen, your Conservative Party states, and they state without your Conservative Party, mate, that, listen, don't take my word, take the... I'll show you, listen, the Conservative Party states... This is listen, what the Labour, Labour mandate says. Ten million houses. Just a moment. For Pakistani. We are not interested. <laughs> 
We are not interested in what Labour says, Sonny. We've had enough of their bloody lies for the past fortnight, haven't we? <laughs> All right, Chicky. what, what about the you, bloody you, horse do you mind? Do you mind, please? Let's have a little bit of decorum. Through the chair. Speaker's <laughs> on his feet, isn't he? Right. I'll see you, Frank. Right. right. But we must also recognise the obstacles. Right. 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 Look, the look, do you mind? When the Pakistanis... Shut. Stop interrupting, Sambo! <laughs> Carry on, friend. Thank you. Right. There would be short-term disadvantages in Britain going into the European Economic Community, which... But that's what I have been saying, isn't it? Mixing with a lot of bloody foreigners. There's your disadvantage, isn't it? Shippers, you can't form a European Economic Community on our own. Can we, you I'm... great elastic-sided stocking? I'm not saying we can! <laughs> you bloody great Lancashire hot pot. I'm not saying we can! <laughs> But all I'm saying is, we don't want a load of bloody foreigners in the common market, do we? <laughs> well, well, I don't get going to have it then. Well, we, we, dear so <laughs> Pakistan. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Got most of them over here already, haven't we? No, I mean, there's, there's, there's Australia, isn't there? Go I mean, on. they've only got a few coons over there and all little ones over there. You have a regional still, right? <laughs> <laughs> then you've got Canada, did you? Yes, but they're not in Europe. I never said they was, did I? Look, you didn't say they wasn't, did you? But they're not in Europe. I know. Look, Australia and Canada are too far away to be in Europe. <laughs> 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 They're two bloody fools, these men. Two bloody fools. I'll tell you something. Now, if you bring a pound of butter from Australia, it costs you more because it has farther to travel. Whereas, on the other hand, if you bring a pound of butter from France, which is not as far away as Australia is, no. it's cheaper. It's uh, much cheaper. I... Let, oh, even Grant can see that, can't you? See what? <coughs> Look, so you bring a pound of butter from France, it's cheaper to, than to get a pound of butter from Australia, do you agree? Doesn't really bother me. I can't afford to buy it anyhow, not on my pension. Yeah. Can't remember the last time I had a nice bit of butter. There was butter on that sandwich I just gave you. Oh, could be. Could be. Could be that that made me gin go greasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I asked to dunk me sandwich, you see, cos me teeth's gone blunt. <laughs> they government teeth, that's the trouble, but they don't slip. Now, that's important. Now, you know, old Jack Lewis, his teeth used to slip. They'd slip and slide around all over the place. And, you know, they used to rattle when he talked. You would hardly hear a word he was saying. Because <laughs> that was the end of him, you know, in the end. They killed him. He was out the back drowning a cat, and the cat scratched him. And he fell back and hit his head and his teeth slipped right into the back of his throat, see? Hey, no, I mean, piss off, mate. Country, <laughs> <laughs> country. <laughs> Only one of the cleanest countries in the world, that's all. <laughs> Listen, how can it be a clean country when you have to put up sign, do not let your doggy do five pound foul on paper? <laughs> A clean country. Of the sun. Yes, this, listen, that's the science that enables man to walk home at night free and not have to go up and turn around and step over and, and have to. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right, is it? Well, I thought that was him for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean, you see, in a clean country, people would know about such things. Yeah, the people know, the dogs don't. Good you dog. give a dog, a dog, a, a, a dog, mate, you get a. Dogs aren't like people. Oh. They're not like... No. Dogs are different. I'll tell Look, you. On, for, just on a point of information, this, Sambo, can I ask you a question? Look, what, are, what do doggies do in your country, then, when they're out for walkies, like, and they get caught short, eh? Well, we don't have many dogs in our country. No, because you eat them all, don't you? <laughs> I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Look, I am a Tory, mate. Right? Make no bones about I'm a Tory, and I'm categorically opposed to the bloody common market. And I am in Labour. You are a war. <laughs> so shut your dirty round. Look here, I am Roman Catholic Irish Pakistan gentleman. Gross, take home pay eight pound ten. I don't you tell me to piss off, I'll give you a up the water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm
I grab I grab you right up the button. Right up the button. Listen, listen. Good heavens. Have you got any food? Just a grand little yard in the gin. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, give me a small one last time, dear. Well, give a large one or one for the ones you didn't have last time, okay? Can you lend me a pound, please? What you do with the last one? I lent it to you. <laughs> you should look after your money, old fruit. All right. Put it on the slate, Lorna. Oh, oh, good, good. Right. Paddies. Ah. <laughs> right, you are a Tory. Correct. I am a Tory and proud of it. Yeah, well, I am a Tory, too. You're a Tory, too? Yeah, so my dad before me. Oh, then, then my, my dad was a Tory and all, yeah. and he, he knew a bit about politics, my yes, dad did. Well, Not like some of this bloody rubbish oh, around here, what votes oh, Labour. Oh. See, my dad... My dad? Look, my, my dad was Irish no, Labour. Listen Irish Labour. Irish Labour. Will you listen a minute about my dad? See, look, my dad... Your dad yeah. voted Tory. Yes, yes. Well, well, so my did dad. my dad. My too. dad. You've my, told... My dad. <laughs> my dad. My dad was out of work for a long time. A long time. And you know what he did? My dad borrowed a pair of boots and he walked eight miles over the moors to vote Tory. Well, my dad would have done that. Don't no. you worry. Your, Your dad's that's... a bloody fool and so is his dad. <laughs> so a bit of respect towards my dad, oh. Sambo. My dad was British and he was entitled to vote for who he wanted a bloody will vote for. Well, my daddy was British too. Yeah. Irish British, mate. Yeah. Irish British. Well, so he might have been. So he might have been, but he wasn't too particular about who he kept with, was he? <laughs> <laughs> My dad was very fussy, very fussy who he kippered with. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy will look like it from where I'm standing, mate. I'll Listen to me, you. I tell you that <laughs> my daddy, my daddy never sleep with very give it one lady in the cages Grand Road, Bombay. <laughs> never. never mind politics. Listen. What? You are a Tory. Correct, I'm a Tory. And you are against the common market? Exactly, against the common market. Right, right. well answer me this then. Edward Heath, right honourable Edward Heath, right. what party is he? Answer, answer. What, what, what party what part is he? I'm going to... What sort of a daft question is that then? What party? <laughs> you show a bit of respect, Sambo. Oh. If old Enoch, if he was up there, in that... Or, or Sir Alec Douglas home himself. If they was up there in number 10 Downing Street, this country wouldn't be in the troubles we're in now, mate. I'll yeah, I'll you. give you that. I'll, I'll yeah. come back on that. You didn't trouble oh. No, I mean... Stupid. <laughs> when I think what that man has done for this country... Or... Bling it up. <laughs> no, you bloody right black pudding. <laughs> Sir Alec Douglas home. I mean, do you know what that man done? That man gave up all his titles he did in order to become the Prime Minister of this country. Oh. And what thanks he get for it, eh? What thanks? Nothing. Absolutely bloody nothing. That's what he got. He shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have given up his titles. Well, he had to, didn't he, you daft old faggot? He had to. <laughs> I mean, you, you, according to the constitution of this country, you cannot preside over a Majesty's government without what you are common up for some bloody daft ruler of You see, in the old days, Sam, when, when we was ruled by our aristocracy, see, we had an empire then, and now we're up to bloody eyeballs in debt, haven't we? You see, that's a rule, a law of the country, that an earl or a duke or a lord cannot become a prime minister. Well, Lord George done it. He was a prime minister. Oh, he wasn't Lord George. He was Lloyd George. Wasn't he a daft cow? <laughs> what about your Lord Palmerston? Oh, I don't go to that pub no more, love. <laughs> so like the governor there, he's a pig. All the years I've been going there, he's never bought me a drink yet. Not like they are here. Not as friendly as here. Blimey. Look, she was not referring to pubs, was she? A gin sodden sandwich dunking old rat bag? <laughs> she was referring to your actual Lord Bloody Palmerston. Well, that's what I'm talking about, your Lord Palmerston. The pub on the corner won by Wally Higgins. Good blood! It was named after him! No, it wasn't, not after Wally. <laughs> Lord Palmerston! It was named after him! That's right, that's what he's called. Oh, shut up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> what what I would like to know is 
Why isn't Ireland and Pakistan in the World Cup series? <laughs> Perfectly simple answer that, my old coon. Because they ain't bloody good enough, that's why. You see, racialism and bloody sport is not nothing right. to not do fair. with that. Nothing to do with that. They just can't play football good enough, that's all. Oh, what about the Georgie Best? What about? He's Irish. He is the best football player in the world in Ireland. Well, go on to that. Go on to that. Did I ask you to blow that match out? No. It's <laughs> done on an impulse. Well, mind your own bloody business. I'll grant you that Georgie Best is the best footballer in the world. But why? Because he comes from the best part of Ireland. What? The English part of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? The English part of Ireland. Who's it? The English part of Ireland. Uh, what's, what's, what's... Uh, hey. Is it true what they've written about you on the wall out there? <laughs> Have they put it up again? I've rubbed it off twice. <laughs> In any case, it's not true. How do you know? I asked her. <laughs> hey, shut up, you sex mad coon. What, what? <laughs> we were talking about football, wasn't we? Football. Football? Yes, I'll sir. tell you what, there's too much religion in football. No, listen. Did you see that Petras for Czechoslovakia? Petras? Petras. He was, a, you know, and he scored a goal and he dropped down to his knees and he crossed himself. Oh, yeah. Well, it, Brazil do that, don't they? I see that they do that before the game and, and half time and all. Oh. And I'll tell you something else. I see that. Grand, do you know that Brazil have got only water in their trainer's bucket? Yeah. And I can't say I blame them. Because, I mean, you don't want to take any chances, do you? You want to get him on your side. See? <laughs> him? Yeah, him. Get out there in the middle of the pitch and cross yourself where he can see. I mean, that's football today, isn't it? See? You don't think that God is watching the World Cup series, do you? Well, what do you think Brazil doing all that Ace King Queen Jack business? <laughs> That's the reason he's watching. I mean, you don't think he'd miss the World Cup, do you? <laughs> of course he hasn't got time to watch the World Cup. He's too busy watching evil men do terrible things. Oh, God, blimey, give him a day off, mate. Give him a day off. <laughs> very clever, these Brazilians. Oh, Brazil, very clever. Make very good nuts. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. Someone else who's been bloody clever. Oh, Miss Oh, Wilson. He's been bloody clever. He's not out there. He's on the panel of experts with Ian St. John. I am not talking about Wilson, your footballer. I am talking about Wilson, your bloody Prime Minister. Oh, yeah. him. Your darling bloody Harold Wilson. Pudding legs. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I see why he's been so clever. He pulled a crafty one, he has. What? Calling a general election during a World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> Political chicanery, that is. Because he knows that all the England supporters out there are all Tories, do they? Nonsense. How do you make that up, then? Well, that's the reason, my dear. It stands the reason, if you think about it. Because your Labour rubbish couldn't afford to go out there, could they? Oh. <laughs> all them England supporters out there are all bloody Tories. And he's robbed us of them votes, old old. Robbed us of about 30 seats, he has, the crafty swine. Hey, Hey, Graham. What about your England squad? Hey. What about them? They can't vote either. He's robbed them of their bleeding vote, he has. Listen, how do you know they're Tories? Well, God blimey, all the money they earn, you don't think they're going to vote bloody Labour, do you? <laughs> no, I mean, because he's trying to bribe them, isn't he? Oh, hold on, hold on. he's bunged out a few OBEs and a night off for health. But they are lads are above corruption. Because you ask me, this old Harold is the one who's corrupt, isn't it? Oh. See? Well, of course it's all them orgies they have up, up down in the street, all them theatricals and gigs inviting up there. I mean, you know what, he's, he's even give out an OBE to that coon singer. Yes. Oh, you've got to be fair, though. He's given an OBE to Gordon Banks and he can't sing. I oh, know. <laughs> it's another example of your... It's another example of your political chicanery, isn't it? See? Jerry Mandarin. Jerry Mandarin. And all that, because you stuck on Trent is a marginal seat, isn't it? Oh, he's crafty, you know. He'd give Enoch an OB if he thought he'd be on his side. Of course he would. He would. He would. Listen, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, lads. He slipped up. What? Old stocky legs is slipped up. Do you know why? Right. Because the lads are back home. Defeated. 3-2 after extra time. <laughs> <laughs> That <laughs> laughing, Sonny. Just a minute. We was not defeated. He was. Well, was not defeated. What, what, we was 2 0 no up at half time, it's wasn't half time. we? Well, listen. Listen. I'll tell you. You know what happened? You know what happened? It was 2 0 no up half time in the boiling cauldron of Guadalamara. 
Leon. <laughs> Leon. Leon. Right, you're right. I stand it's... corrected. And what happened? Bobby Moore. God bless him. OBE. Because he got that off the Queen herself, not off of Harold. <laughs> and he got the lads together in the dressing room at half time. And he said, look, lads, he said, we've beaten the Jerry, we've beaten the Hun in two world wars and in one World Cup. 1914. Oh, that's a lot of goals. See? <laughs> He said, and here we are, 2 no up, and we've established our superiority to them. But he said, lads, he said, Martin, Gordon, and Jeffy. The team. The, the team. team. He said, lads, he said, what is more important, winning the World Cup for the second time, or protecting our beloved country from the creeping menace of the bloody Labour Party, he said. <laughs> he said, listen, lads, he said, and... And as a man, the cry come back, save our beloved country from Bolshevism. He come back. He said, right, old ladies. He said, get out there. He said, give them, make it look good. Take, take them into extra time and let them win by one goal. No more and no less. He said, what is Alf Ramsey doing during all this? They didn't let him know about it, did they? <laughs> Why is he Labour? <laughs> I mean, he didn't get his night off for his knowledge of football, did he? <laughs> and old Bobby says, get out there, lads, lose the match, and then back home and vote Wilson out! Yes! He's off his nuts! That's sir. what happened! That's what happened here! Oh, the dust of this fellow! Bloody Wilson, run you back Wilson home! Up. What are you talking about? Back home! 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 Yeah. You're not a bad old nigger, are you, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not, not all said and done, you're not a bad old Samba, were you? They were defeated by a better team, 3-2 after half time. You traitorous black bastard, you! No. <laughs> This is BBC One. For your information, Sonny, these goggles are not on the National Elf because these goggles, mate, happen to be private goggles. By virtue of the fact that they was bought before your Labour lot brought the National Elf in. Not my Labour lot. All right, I'll grant you not your Labour lot, but they were still bought before the National Elf come in, see? Because these glasses, they belong to my dear old dad, they did. They was presented to him by the Prince of Wales in commemoration of the application crisis. Oh, get it together. Maybe. Never mind about maybe. Those are the facts, son. Facts. Inconsolable facts. Facts. Yeah. Facts. I'll tell you the facts. If you can't see him, you want to get them changed. Nothing wrong with these, mate. Nothing wrong with these goggles. Don't you worry. I can see him in night. Mate, but it is also the opinion of one of the finest political leaders this country's ever had. Enoch bloody power on his <laughs> Mister to you, if you don't mind. All right, then. Enoch, Mr. Bloody power <laughs> Bloody white Sambo. Listen. <laughs> you listen to me, Gunga Din. Gunga Din? <laughs> what? Uh, you'll soon change your tune if he gets it at number 10, mate. God blimey. Your feet won't touch the ground, they won't. <laughs> oh, boy, he'll have you back in the jungle playing on your tom-toms for you can say that. <laughs> I'm, I am leaving. I am not paying £2,000 to come into this country to be insulted by bloody... Bloody skinhead! 
you are entitled to raise your salient facts. Mr. Graham, see? Hey, the coon over there is political, isn't he? I mean, it's not his fault. It's not your fault, John John, but you are a political <laughs> question, you see? You've got to admit that, haven't you? Yes, and no, but there's such a thing as politeness. All right, granted, there yeah. is such a thing as politeness, but this is still a free country, isn't it? Still a democracy, and you are entitled to thoughts. Isn't granted, you? yes, it right. is a democracy, and you Thank are you. entitled to thoughts. Right. Granted. Yes. Yes, but you don't have to voice them, do you? All right, well, say I didn't see him standing there. Let's put it that way, all right? <laughs> well, if you didn't see him standing there, all I can say is... You want to get down the National Health and get yourself a new pair of goggles? Here, listen, f- And mine's National Health. And I can see him in mine too, you daft old rat bag. <laughs> no, why don't you shut up? <laughs> no, I mean, marvellous, eh? It's marvellous. Come in here for quiet drinks and chef, and everybody wants to pick argument with you, don't they? I didn't pick argument for you. You bloody pissed argument with me! <laughs> On a point of information, Sambo, I did not... <laughs> I did not pick an argument with you, did I? I was merely expressing an opinion. An opinion, which is the sovereign right of every Englishman to express. A right guaranteed to us under the Magna Charter and an opinion. There's not only my opinion... This with bloody light cuts on. <laughs> and for so why? Because they want to become same colour as me, brown. Same colour as me. But when I go to landlady, open the door, oh, no colours, walk, go home, outside. The bloody man, all oh, bloody man. Who's the coon getting all airy at it? <laughs> Me! No need to get all airy at it, is there, John John? Well, yeah, well, you can't blame him, can you? I mean, just so rude. I'm not rude, mate, not rude. Not rude? No. Going off about, about the coloured people. And the man standing there? Well, I've heard you going on about him. Not in front of him, you haven't. Yeah, but I mean, look, in a... Look, give us me drink over here, darling. Look, in a political discussion, see, in your polemicals, 